Hi guys, welcome back to Place. Um, as we've been looking through the Psalms this past couple of weeks, we've been seeing who God is. He's, re he's reminding us that he is a sovereign God. He is a God who reigns over us even now. He is a God who we should delight in and a God who's worthy of our worship. Um, and tonight in Psalm 96, um, I picked out three points um, from this Psalm and it's worshipping, witnessing and waiting. So worshipping is found in verses 1 to 4. And it says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord of all the earth. Bless his name and tell of his salvation from the dead to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvellous works among all the people. In verse 1 it's saying that it's reminding us that we are to sing to God. We are to sing praises to God. But not just any old song, but a new song. A song reflecting the glories and the mercies that God is revealing to us every day. And he provides us with the mercies every day. We shouldn't take that for granted. So our praise needs to reflect the fact that he is providing them. Worship is a response thanking God who provides us with everything that we need. Who protects us through the good times and through the suffering. Who is a loving God and a God who reigns over all authorities of the earth. And who, is, who has decided to graciously choose to save us, to save you, and you didn't do anything to deserve it. Now, if that's not something that we are to be thankful for, who or what else is worthy of our praise? Verse 2 talks about blessing God's name. And to bless God's name is to praise him, to give thanks for what he has done and for all he has given us. God is, isn't just for Sundays. He isn't for when our plans fail or as a last resort. We are to proclaim and rejoice in his name every day until he returns. And we are to tell all people about his marvellous works, not just the people who we want to or the people we find it easier to, but each and every day we need to do that. And we need to remember that no one's out of God's reach. He loves everyone and uses people like us to declare his glory among the nations so that all will eventually hear the gospel. In verse 4, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods. Fear God? What's the first kind of thing that comes into your head when you talk about fear, to fear God? I know the first thought that was in my head was, but why? God's a loving God, why should I fear him? But I've come to understand that it's a reverent fear where to have. In Proverbs 9, 10 it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We are to fear God not because we are scared of him, but because He under we understand that he is an all-powerful, all-knowing and all-loving righteous judge. We also need to remember that there is a fear outside of Christ and a different fear in Christ. In Nehemiah 1 it talks about delighting to fear his name. It is a fear that doesn't drive us away, but it actually draws us to him. And in Psalm 33, 6, 8 to 9, it commands, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and the breath of his mouth all their hosts. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Fear the Lord your God alone, and he is greatly to be praised. Um, in verse 5, it says, He is to be feared above all gods. All other gods are mere vanities. And I've recently been reading through the book of Ecclesiastes and I've really been challenged and encouraged um, because it's kind of got me thinking, what is permanent? What is lasting? And where do I seek my answers from? Um, so vanity by definition is a vapour or a breath. It's used to describe things that are fleeting. And there's so many things in this world that we would rather put our trust in, yet knowing that they will never last and knowing that they can't satisfy us like Christ can, knowing they will fade away. We have no need to have any other gods. Why would we want another God when we only when we have got the only God who can save, the only God who is eternal, and the only God who is a righteous and fair judge? And I know, and I've been challenged, and I need to change my view and my mindset and things of the world and direct my thoughts to the fact that God has graciously provided us with more than we deserve. And we can't do anything to add to that by gaining or having possessions because they're going to fade away, but Christ will last. Only God is worthy of all of our praise, the one who made the heavens and the earth. 
But just think to yourself, if we are lazy people when it comes to worshipping and rejoicing in the joy of God and marvelling at salvation and what Christ sacrificed for us, why then should lost people be interested in hearing what we have to say about the gospel? If we are not worshippers of Christ, we will be lousy witnesses for Christ. Let me say that again. If we are not worshippers of Christ, we will be lousy witnesses for Christ. But with a deeper understanding of God and of our own sin, it leads to a greater experience of his abundant grace, resulting in more worship. And worship is followed by witness. For witnessing, which is the second W, we need to be a people willing to lay our lives down to serve the Lord by witnessing and sharing the gospel with others. Our lives so often revolve around us and what we want and what we don't want to sacrifice. But we have been given the ultimate sacrifice. Christ gave it to us. What matters to Christ should matter to us. His priorities should be our priorities. And the lives of those reached by the gospel should be the people in our hearts who we want to reach out to because we know that Christ loves them as much as he loves us. But the urgency of witnessing and sharing the gospel should be apparent and clear to us, as we don't know when Christ will return to judge the world in righteousness and the people in their faithfulness, like it says in verse 13. And with the world in the shaken state that it is at the minute, everyone is so uncertain about what the future holds for them. But we are safe and secure in the fact that we know Christ will return. But in knowing that, we must be servants of the Lord, Even now during this time, we need to be seeking for opportunities for God to use us, whether that be through mentioning to someone about coming to Christianity Explored, mentioning to listening to the podcasts or the sermons, or just to call on that friend who you find really hard to talk to in that friendship group in school, or the person you work with who you never chat to outside of work, but now you don't even have the opportunity to speak to them in work because you're not there. Just think, you are placed exactly where you need to be, You need to be open to be being used in ways you wouldn't expect to be by a God who is a saviour, a God who is your saviour and your creator. You are placed exactly where you need to be and you need to be used, open to be being used in ways that you wouldn't expect to be. And the final W is waiting and it's in verses 10 and 13. So that is, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness. We are an impatient people. We want the answers as soon as we ask the questions. But we constantly need reminded that our timing is imperfect. Our thoughts and our attitudes and even our prayers are selfish. And we want things to be given to us because we want them, not because they're what we need. We need to be patiently waiting for Christ to answer our prayers, for Christ to reveal his word to us, for Christ to open the hearts and the minds of the unbelievers. We don't do the saving, that's all Christ, but we can share the gospel in the hope that Christ will do that. And he also rewards those who wait. And his timing is perfect. So we need to patiently wait on the return of Christ as that will be a day of deliverance, a day of ultimate worship and a day that we are called to our eternal home. And what a day that will be.